Welcome to an Adhocracy Fedora Friday! Today, advertising nostalgia. Betty's not a vitamin. Remember that? We'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm David Landine. And I'm JD Melville. And welcome to an Adhocracy Fedora Friday, where we like to play games, we have fun, we talk to people, we goof off. It's Friday. You don't want to work. We get it. Now, make sure that you click that button down there boink, that says subscribe to know when we have episodes come out. But even if you aren't subscribed, we'll tell you. Um, they are every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Right. Monday's our news segment, Wednesday's our show, and then Friday is our fun Fedora Friday episodes. Now, uh, today we are going to be doing a new segment called Remember That? In this segment, we're going to talk about the ones who came before us. You know, the spokespeople, the jingles, the mascots, the old people that came before us that need a little attention because we built our lives off of them, right? Yeah. Now, uh, whether you wanted, whether you knew about this, whether you uh, bought them or ate them or chewed them, uh, we are going to remember something with you. This world takes a little growing into, and 10 million kids are getting all the vitamins they need to help them grow with Flintstones. We are Flintstones kids, 10 million strong and growing. We are Flintstones kids, 10 million strong and growing. We are Flintstones kids, 10 million strong. Flintstones, America's favorite. Now, the Flintstones cartoon was actually um, a cartoon that started kind of out for adults. It was sort of the honeymooners in a cartoon form. Um, think today like uh, Family Guy. Um, you've got South Park. You've got um, I'm, you've got a, a bunch yeah, of them today. The, the, the cartoons that were had a little bit more adult humor in them yeah. had adult like had grown up themes to them that wouldn't appeal to the little little kids as much, but uh, this actually kind of gelled more with the teenage group. Yeah, so it was slated at the like 8, 9, 9.30 time slot, but um, as the teenage group kind of grabbed onto it, um, it, it sort of changed its focus. Now, the moral basis of, of the cartoon and the, the, the characters made it a perfect avenue for advertising. Yeah, so in 1968, Flintstones um, partnered up with a vitamin company called Miles Laboratory. And they were sort of known at that time, they were kind of owning the chewable vitamin. They kind of brought vitamins into a chewable form that people, so they were really dominating. They were kind of a pioneer in their game. Um, and they have sort of dominated that ever since. I mean, granted they were purchased by Bayer, but we'll get to that later. Now the cartoon has since left us and it's gone into syndication, but um, really, we still remember the Flintstones. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that the generation that grew up on the Flintstones now has their own kids, and you have that nostalgia theme there that helped to keep the Flintstones from going extinct. <laughs> Man! That was a pretty good dad joke. That was. Um, and in fact, that song... was composed by Martin O'Donnell. Now, you may know this guy's music before. You've probably heard it if you were play, if you've played video games. Um, there are a couple major video games that he's composed for, including Halo, Omni, uh, Myth, and Destiny. Wow. And so, uh, the the biggest thing, well, one one of the things that maybe you do or don't remember was the Betty fiasco. <laughs> Now, this, this was basically that um, for 25 years of making this vitamin, um, Betty was not included into the, the vitamin lineup. Um, you had people like uh, Dino the dog. You had the Martian, the Great Gazoo, and even the Flintmobile. A car. A car. A car. 
Um, and, and the manufacturer actually had cited several reasons. Like one, Betty's waist was too small, so like it w- the vitamin would break yeah. all the time. Yeah. And as well, um, Betty and Wilma were kind of indistinguishable. Like you wouldn't really know which one was which. Now, it actually wasn't a huge deal for a long time. I mean, this was, there was 25 years that she wasn't part of the yeah, Flintstone lineup. No, no one lineup. really paid attention. Um, but it kind of came to light a little bit more during the live-action remake in 1994 uh, when Rosie O'Donnell brought it up on a talk show. Yeah, she played Betty. Yeah, and she was... You know, she read an article upset. saying, kind of understandably in, upset. In Spy magazine upset brought this to light on a talk mm-hmm. show that she wasn't a vitamin or her character wasn't a vitamin, and this started a little bit of an outrage, a little bit of a movement. There was even a band called Betty's Not a Vitamin. <laughs> <laughs> we should look up that music and see what it sounds like. Yeah, Betty's Not a Vitamin. <laughs> 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 or make our own Betty's Not a Vitamin song. That would be fun. That would, yeah. Well, maybe maybe our audience has it. <laughs> Send us in our your uh, own Betty's Not a Vitamin song. So with all this attention and a movement, and you know, I'm, I'm sure this was fueled by um, women's rights and things like this at that time, mm-hmm. um, there was sort of an outrage. And instead of like just changing it, um, you know, going like, okay, us, Bayer, the company that now owns this, um, okay, we'll just now include Betty. They made this an ingenious marketing campaign. And in this campaign, they uh, basically put out the vote for Betty um, if she was going to, you know, be included in. So they set up prehistoric voting booths. They had a 1-800 number that people could call and and say, hey, yes, I want Betty in there. And it had a big turnout. There were uh, 3,000 kids and adults that mm-hmm. visited the booth and 17,000 calls. Uh, and surprisingly... Actually, not surprisingly, 91% of people thought that uh, Betty should become a vitamin. Which, to me, it's funny that some people took the time to go and vote for Betty not to become a vitamin. I'm wondering, were these the prehistoric trolls? <laughs> like before, before the whole internet thing, you still had people that would troll these, you know, and, and call in multiple times to make sure Betty had some op- opposition. Or maybe even they were kind of opposed to the idea and the movement as opposed to just the actual, okay, this is a vitamin. I Actually, mean, you know, if they did it today, I bet that it would probably be a little bit closer margin. <laughs> I haven't gone that far. It's true. Um, and so, yeah, they, they, they included it in 1995, and they actually replaced the Flint Mobile. The car was out. The car oh. was out. So, well, now, if you're, if you're now looking I think we car, need, if you want a movement, let's, have, let's bring back the Flint Mobile. Yeah. All right. So, Flintstones have, have actually um, advertised all sorts of stuff grape jelly, Alka Seltzer. They even did cigarettes at once, and there was outrage about that. <laughs> but I think we will always remember Flintstones for, for their advertising of vitamins. Remember that? Thank you for joining us on this special Fedora Friday episode. Yeah, is there anything that you remember that you want us to cover? Is there um, some kind of ad or some kind of um, campaign that you remember? Something that affected your childhood and... Changed the, the, the way things are. Yeah. Put it in the comments, or you can also post it on Facebook, Twitter, Twitter. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All right. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to our show. And now, a weekend, a video for your weekend. Time to choose a Flintstones vitamin, Chris. Mmm, I'll take Barney. Hey, Chris! (laughs) Glad you could make it. Wow, it's you and Fred! Yep, the most famous men (laughs) in bedrock history are carved out of this mountain. Mm.